Welcome to Once a Nurse, Always a Nurse. I'm Leanne Meyer, and I am so happy to welcome you to our show today. Um, one of the things that I have for 30 years uh, been fussing about in regard to nurses is that nurses do not seem to have very much information about money, about economics in general, or their own finance, finances in specifics. And this has bugged me from probably the time that I figured out that there was more to it than checking and savings accounts, which I'm embarrassed to say I only knew about until I was like in my 30s. So a um, manager that I had that was also a good friend started talking to me about 401ks and 403bs, never heard of them, IRA. And that was when I first sought out some financial assistance and began to uh, learn more. And I also realized that it's really important for nurses to understand some of these background economic situations because we're operating in an organization oftentimes that is telling us what the economic situations are regarding us and our, our uh, place in the system. And I think it's really important that we know what is true and what isn't. So we're gonna be focusing today on uh, nurses and retirement. Um, and, and, you know, whatever you're thinking of doing now as you're starting a new, um, basically a new direction in nursing after COVID. So um, I am really happy to be able to invite to join us my uh, new friend, Grace Fu. She is um, a BSN RN and she has some microbiology background. <laughs> she also... She lives on the big island of Hawaii, so we can all be jealous as we, we listen to her. But the name of our show today is called Wealth Building for Nurses. And so, Grace, thank you so much for being here, and I'm really excited to learn. Absolutely. Thank you. Aloha, uh, Leanne. Mm -hmm. Aloha and... back. I get to use my aloha message. <laughs> <laughs> so... I want you to first tell us about yourself. You, it started out as a as an ASN, and then you got some more education, and then became a BSN. And how, you know, tell us how you transitioned then into the economic side mm. of um, nursing. You know, I totally resonate in terms of Leanne what you just spoke about because that's the place I came from. Yeah, uh, zero financial background. Knowing nothing three years ago, if you had talked to Gracie about money, I would be running the other way. <laughs> so 30 years in nursing, nothing to show for it. That was mm -hmm. a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. And in my 50s, um, financially devastated because of a divorce, I had to start from ground zero. So three years ago, when my mentor, Dan Keppel, um, on the platform that we're with right now, took me underneath his wings and basically said to me, Gracie, if I can show you how to basically have 100% equity ownership of your own book of business in the next five to eight years, would that be worth your while? And I was starting from <laughs> no retirement, okay? No retirement, and he's tell, telling me that I can make a six-figure passive income. So guess what I said to him? Of course I said yes. <laughs> I said yes. So big my yes. <laughs> big yes, yeah. So my background essentially is... Um, 10 years in conventional medical, tried everything, could not find my groove because my heart and happy button is really about making a difference in people's lives, right? That's what got me into nursing in the first place and realizing that I love stuff that work that don't have side effects. So that propelled me into the alternative healing arena for the last two decades. So I was doing independent research, um, validating the efficacies and modalities, you know, and having my own private practice, seeing clients myself. Uh, when COVID came with all the massive lockdowns, what happened is I lost my business. Mm. That's just the hard truth of what happened. You know, 30% of businesses in Hawaii basically got wiped out through COVID. And because we're tourist based, you know, that's, um, that's difficult. You know, it's, it's going to take a lot of recovery. Um, but uh, I think there's a lot of hope because things are shifting in I hope a positive direction. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, today I get to educate yes. specifically nurses, you know, specifically yeah. healthcare, uh, women, especially, right? Because 
um, this is traditionally a, a male dominated <laughs> industry. We're changing the face of financial services in a sense that you look at somebody like me from Hawaii, you know, female, five foot one, Asian, you know, uh, person of color. So um, in order to reach these minority communities, I realized we needed to look like them, feel like them, know what their pain is. So boy, do I know the pain of being a nurse and not being financially secure after 30 years in the industry. And my trajectory three years ago was Gracie would have to work for the rest of my life because I had zero retirement. So uh, I just want to give everybody hope out there. <laughs> okay. yeah. You mentioned uh, divorce. You mentioned uh, not having the basic fund fundamental foundational knowledge. Yeah. And you mentioned um, uh, pandemic, so worldwide disaster yes. that there's no way you could control. And That's so right. those are some of them. And then for some of us, it has been um, most definitely uh, disease, health issues, um, probably not making good health choices, uh, mm -hmm. tending to be telling other people what to do for their health, but not so good at following that ourselves. Um, those are probably the main things that I hear people saying why they have not been able to save money, probably then children and increases in costs and all those kinds of things, sure. too. So we want to know um, that we don't have to worry about all that stuff out there. I want you to reassure me and everybody else that the things you're going to talk about are going to take us zooming past any of any of the stuff that's the the. What's the, the noise that's around mm -hmm. us? We can just <clears throat> zoom right into what's really important. So yeah. you had mentioned about, uh, you told me about living benefits mm -hmm. and how important they are as an income replacement. Absolutely. That's completely foreign to me. Mm -hmm. It was foreign to me too, yeah, prior to understanding the alternatives. So if there's something that works out there, Gracie will find it, number one. <laughs> That's from my trajectory. And I love how you set this on a trajectory where we do have great news for people, uh, where they can tap into, you know, some very powerful solutions that can really shift generational trajectories. And that's the thing that really um, I love about this platform because I get to share these solutions. So um, going from zero knowledge to now being able to be uh, an educator. So that's how I call myself, educators of nurses when it comes to alternatives. Yeah, because typically, you know, having been in the industry for 30 years, what I was told is, okay, Gracie, now you have a job, go and get a 401k, start saving inside of a 401k. But nobody told me that there were two big gaping holes with 401ks that make it not work because we're seeing the baby boomers come through now. Yeah. yeah. And we're seeing how these traditional plans have not worked for them. And so first gaping hole we're looking at is market loss. Look at what happened last year. Yeah. Yeah. Typically what we're seeing now as we're rolling people out of these old plans and as we're seeing also the workforce changing with massive layoffs and whatnot, people looking for better positioning, you know, just to go back a little bit, 18 months off island has taught me a lot because I came back 18 months. Uh, later, now about, you know, two months into coming back here, what I noticed is the prices of everything doubled on the island. Yeah. Now, if your income is going to stay the same, what is the solution? America does not have a savings problem. America has an income problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have to fix that. Yeah. And obviously, that's a whole different conversation. But in terms of the retirement piece, you know, there are better solutions out there today where you don't have to go through any market loss. I'm talking zero market loss options where you can save and have a guaranteed lifetime income. That's huge because the 401k is a finite bucket, yes. which means what we're seeing, okay, the kapunas, the elders that we see on this island, and I've also seen it on the mainland, is 70s and 80s, I see them working at Walmart behind counters at McDonald's, not because they want to, it's because they have to. Their retirement basically ran out. So what is the solution for that? Well, when you have solutions where you can tap into guaranteed lifetime incomes, that's massive. 
Yeah, and the other thing is plugging that hole called market loss. And the other massive hole that we have no control over, as we know, 401ks is 100% taxable. Mm -hmm. So if we can reallocate monies into non-taxable platforms, just like what the wealthy have leveraged called guarantee contracts and get educated on it, then we can have a very different financial trajectory altogether. One thing I want to mention in here, too, and you are the perfect example of it. I have been mm -hmm. to, um, you know, when I finally figured out I needed to have help to learn about this yes. and went to financial advisors, I found that um, I was uh, many times um, going into that mail system that's, that's right. been set up for a thousand years. And they're kind of like nice little, you know, nursery or whatever. But it's yeah. really important that people know how to make sure that that person behind the desk yeah. is on your side. Well, the truth of the matter is the reason we exist today as the number one uh, brokerage for the carrier today for the last 16 years is because the system has not been working. Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, traditionally, we put money into the 401k trusting it'll be taken care of, but it's not. Nobody's watching it. So you actually have to self-advocate. You have to get yourself educated if you're going to use something like that, number one. But, you know, to be able to tap into even better options out there today, I think, uh, is the better choice. Yeah. So that's why we're doing a lot of rollovers. Last year, we've had 140 percent growth in that uh, arena alone because people realize numbers do not lie when you see the results on the other side. Traditionally, when you get into um, brokerage accounts, different things like that, you know, your broker is not going to be able to manage your account for you. Just know that they put you into mutual funds. You basically have to manage it yourself. That's the truth of the matter. OK. Um, and if they're paid on something called assets under management, and this is an important thing that I had to understand. OK, there's kind of like a conflict of interest. They're paid to put your money into the market. Why would they encourage you to get out of the market? They won't. Mm -hmm. So when you can have access to tools where you're not even exposed to the market, you're able to capture the upward gain of the market, yeah, and have guaranteed lifetime incomes, and in certain situations, even be able to have living benefits on top of that, you know, it's a, it's a massive win because that, that living benefits kicks in when we get uh, critical illness, critical injuries, you know, terminal illness and chronic ones, where when shit hits the fan, <laughs> you got the safety net where income's coming in for up to 50 months. Yeah, so I'm talking about the number one product of the industry because of the brokerage that we work with. We have exclusive products and writers that no one else can have access to. Yeah, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that impressed me is you said that the company you've been working for has been around for 175 years. That's right, that's right. So they are our flagship carrier and they came up with two the two number one products of the industry that I'm really proud to represent. Uh, they're probably our go-to person, right? Do I shop for my clients with other companies? Of course, you know, because I want what's suitable for the clients. But uh, because they have the best, that's what I want to offer if the clients can even qualify for it. Yeah. So they're my go-to. Okay. Absolutely. So are we ready to move on from that? Um, yeah. we're, you're, yeah. We talked a little bit about guaranteed contracts. Maybe you can... Mm -hmm. um, expand on that a little bit, like creating leverage with guaranteed contracts. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So that's something that I wasn't aware of, Leanne, because, you know, prior to this, it's kind of like, okay, put your money in the bank, <laughs> 100% taxable platform, right? Uh, but when we study wealth, we understand the wealthy do not operate like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single dollar that they own, they turn into an employee for them. So when I talk about creating leverage, it's really reallocating monies now into vehicles where you can leverage, where you can use other people's money to do things with. And you can cycle money in and out of these tools to create family banks, to create a self-banking concept where um, while your money's earning 100% for you, you are leveraging other people's money to do things with. You know, so for example. Okay, yeah. You need to give me an example of that. So yeah, if you're you talking with me, um, so when you're talking about, um, uh, used tools and you used, um, another term, uh, a product or something like that, you're talking about a specific, uh, plan, like, a, um, um, uh, maybe you can describe it better than I can. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, please. So what I didn't know three years ago was that using guarantee contracts called life insurance, ah, okay. you can guarantee, uh, you, ha- you can have certain guarantees. Yeah, For example, you can create cash value. And I'll just tell you a story. My friend, uh, Rave Stewart, on our platform is a national broker. And the way she takes vacations is very different than the average person. Yeah. So every vacation is around three grand, something like that. Her and her husband go skiing, whatever, Park City, Utah, and stuff like that. Okay. So she takes three vacations a year. What she does is she cycles money in and out of that guarantee contract or cash value in her life insurance. Okay. So she takes $3,000 out using life insurance company's money while her $3,000 is earning double digits inside of these accounts for her. Okay. When she comes back from vacation, she makes money. She cycles money back in so that she can do it a second time. And a third time in the last 12 years, she's taken 36 vacations. Okay. Cycling out $3,000 every single time for 36 times while her $3,000 is earning for her. So that's the kind of leverage I'm talking about. It's a different mindset. I actually can share a personal experience too. Um, I, as a uh, brand new nurse had somebody knock on my door uh, when I was like 21 and talked me into doing a u- universal life policy. Mm-hmm. She told okay. me, you are going to be the smartest woman in the world uh, when you get to retirement. And actually by using that um, product, mm-hmm. I was able to buy four houses, um, yep. uh, seven or eight cars, just like, uh-huh. hey, here's the here's cash. Um, here's how I'm paying for this. Um, and then just uh, abundant other things where I got into problems. I had that money right there that um, mm-hmm. that I could go back to, take that out, put it back in if I cared to do that, et cetera. So, yeah. So cool. that's brilliant. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Leanne, because I'll tell you, three years ago, I had 30,000 sitting in my mattress. Okay. Cause I'm Chinese, right? <laughs> That's what we're taught to do. 30,000 sitting in my mattress not earning because I didn't trust the banks. Okay. I didn't trust the banks. Okay. And so when I met my financial planner, okay, my financial advisor, who is a referral to me. And as I said, three years ago, if you talk to Gracie about money, I would run the other way. So I use somebody else. <laughs> I use somebody else. What she taught me was invaluable. She taught me about the living benefits as a single mom with two kids. Yeah. It was the ability using the living benefits to create a safety net for income replacement, like we kind of talk about, um, by allowing us to accelerate the death benefit if anything happens in, you know, in terms of injuries or sickness. What she didn't teach me was the cash value piece, which you learned at the age of 21. Okay. So I gave her the 30,000. She put it into the market. When COVID came, yeah, when COVID came, I needed money because I lost my business. Okay. So this is the difference. This is the difference. And I learned the hard way. I took that 30000 out. I paid upfront fees because I thought, okay, Gracie's going to leave that money in long term. But you never know what life is going to dish you. Right. That is one thing I learned. So I took the 30000 out lost upfront fees, lost money through COVID taking money out, used up the money for living expenses so that I could scale on this platform to make the pivot. Now, if I had had that money in cash value life insurance, that money would still be there today because I would have taken a loan out and I would have repaid myself. Yeah. So that would have been the difference. So two glaring examples, Gracie's example, Leanne's example of what knowing what's right, knowing what's true in terms of uh, tools that are powerful to create leverage versus I didn't have the knowledge because I wasn't educated. So today, do I have the burning desire to make sure everybody knows (laughs) there are better options out there? So I don't know if this is a trait with nurses or just me, but I don't like numbers. I tend Uh, to, you know, um, not want to know that much about them. So I was very happy to have that lady take my money and put it into a good uh, situation. And I was very happy as time went along to, you know, have it there. But there's still a part of me that just doesn't want to know all these economics. Um, and I don't understand what that is. But I think that I'm not alone. I think there are other nurses out there. So how do we overcome that 
uh, a version. Yeah. So I think it's natural, right? Because anything that we don't know, we're going to shy away from. There's resistance. There's just natural part of being human. It's our inheritance in terms of the ego structure and all that. So I was in the same boat. You know, I was fond of numbers when it came to data, but when it came to money, it was an absolute aversion, you know, third generation Christian, uh, you know, money is bad, rich people are bad, you know, I had to overcome all that. So as I um, up leveled my mindset and my education around finances, I understood what a powerful tool this is, not just to even shift my own, you know, and my family's financial trajectory, uh, but now being able to help other people do the same thing. Yeah, you know, because I've walked that journey. I know what it's like. I know the pain of being without. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so now it's being able to shift generational trajectories for people that we get to work with. Yeah. So I think it's just allowing that openness to just be exposed to these new ideas, first of all. And, you know, uh, be open to looking at numbers because numbers ultimately do make sense, right? If you can make this much after 30 years versus this much after 30 years, you can see that difference. It's just straight math. Um, and uh, yeah, being, being willing and open. I think that was my first step. Um, I know that you had brought with you some uh, data and, and uh, numbers. Is this a place that might be good to yeah, put that yeah. in? Let's, let's take a look at it. Yeah, let's take a look at it. So if we're looking at these data and understanding that 42% of the families would face financial hardship within six months of an event of a death of a wage earner. And Mm -hmm. the other statistic, let me just go to this. Yeah, six months, that's all we have. Yeah, and then the statistics of 102 million Americans are underinsured or uninsured. And the other day I read some statistics where a quarter of those who are insured are actually insured by, with an employer plan. Now, that's another subject, another day. Understanding that that's not transferable. When we leave that job, we have to leave that behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Alzheimer's is a new thing that we're having to deal with in terms of as a company, we're choosing to create products where, you know, we are taking care of people with Alzheimer's and Lewy body dementia and any, any type of cognitive, uh, cognitive impairment. I just want to mention, I want to just point out that that 100,000, 102,000 people uninsured or underinsured, that's a little under one third of the population of our country. That's right. That's 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 breathtaking. That is breathtaking, isn't it? And the other statistic here, more than 50% of American households rely on two incomes. We know that. That means if someone passes away or someone's injured and that income is impacted, this is the average debt that is left behind, 61554 And that's why we see these GoFundMe pages go up, right? But we also understand that, you know, close to 90% of the GoFundMes never reach their funding level. So we're trying to create that GoFundMe that is built into the policy as a safety net for folks. And um, so the other part of that is if in a couple, you have one person who is ill and, you know, fighting cancer, fighting you know, any of these long term chronic, very expensive illnesses to try and mm-hmm. treat and knowing that they're n- probably never going to completely overcome them. So then that spouse, whoever is the main spouse, is not only having to take care of that person, but they may not be able to work either. That's right. That's right. And so that's why, you know, we see these statistics, right? 45% of Americans carry medical debt. Yeah. And it's the biggest cause for foreclosures and bankruptcies, personal bankruptcies in the U.S., which is sad today. You know, those are the statistics that we're trying to create a a shift in. Um, And that is definitely one of my hot buttons as a nurse, you know, seeing so much of this go on that, uh, you know, I do want to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear this. And I'm glad that you're on nurse's side. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, uh, in terms of the living benefits, I do love what this company is doing because it covers terminal, chronic, Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia, critical illness. Um, and under the chronic piece, you know, is how we used to do the cognitive impairment. If, if someone cannot perform two out of the six activities of daily living, this piece kicks in, uh, whether it's due to cognitive impairment or physical impairment. 
And it's massive because it's a long-term payout, which basically is like a built-in long-term care at no additional cost is the value that you know I see in these policies. Um, and they're the only company that offers critical injury, which covers coma, paralysis, severe burns, and also traumatic brain injury. And which a is- lot of times people will insert and say, oh, but I'm, you know, name the age 30, 40, 50. Mm-hmm. I'm too young to have any of these problems. <laughs> and as nurses, oh my God. you certainly should know that that is absolutely not true. And there is yeah. no time period. You could have a baby that runs That's into right chronic problems that you're going to have that problem with that child for the rest of their life. That's right. That's right. In fact, uh, we see so many young people, right? Um, Myself included, you know, uh, when I got these policies, it was because of the living benefits as a single mom. What I saw was instead of transferring that financial risk to my family, I'm able to now have that safety net to take care of myself Mm -hmm. because I don't want to transfer that financial risk uh, to family members. Um, these are other statistics, right? 70% of individuals who reach 65 will need some kind of a long-term care at some point in their life. And if Social Security is expected to be around 19,884 per year, who can survive on that? Who can survive on that? You know, going back to where we were saying, you know, it's more expensive to get sick in the United States than to die. It's really a true statement. Yeah, so how do we mitigate those kinds of situations and be able to pass on a legacy to our family. So what what are the alternatives? What are the things you would it say, I'm a nurse, I'm coming into you, I'm saying, oh my gosh, I've been, I'm 69 years old and I don't have enough to live on. I'm every mm-hmm. month I'm worried that, you know, and this is kind of a true statement. <laughs> I'm worried is it going to make it to the end of the month? And right. you know, if anything happens with my car or anything else, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So So we custom tailor every single conversation. Obviously, everybody's financial situation is going to be different. Uh, So I welcome these kinds of conversations. Um, And there's no, you know, try to squeeze someone into a box to make things happen. It's just based on what they need, what their goals are, and then custom design things that will fit. These products are so flexible that there's so many ways of structuring them. And uh, we do custom design every single one based on the situations that, uh, you know, a person needs. Yeah. Uh, But mainly, I would say, if someone can shift into tax-free buckets for savings, that would be wise. Yeah. And leveraging uh, the cash value inside of guarantee contracts would be a good way. And something that also completely eliminates market loss, because those are things we can't control. Yeah, the market, taxation, and obviously, you know, when we get sick, nobody knows. Yeah, nobody can guarantee our health. So if there's ways to have comprehensive living benefits, obviously the best ways to do it would be at no cost. That's built into these policies. Um, and those are the four things that I would focus on learning about to begin. So to- one question that's coming to my mind, and I'm sure for other people, those of us who have gone to a financial advisor, we do get that they're putting us into products that they make money. That's how their their business is set up. They're making money by putting us into a product that might or might not really be Mm -hmm. the best for us, Mm -hmm. but definitely is the best for them. Right. So how is this different? So question to ask yourself, yeah. Is this person who's helping me, can they sleep at night if I lose (laughs) money? (laughs) Can they sleep still sleep at night? Yeah, exactly. So then you know, you know, um, you know who is got your back and who doesn't have your back. Um, So for me, you know, uh, finding someone who can shop for you, you know, in terms of what's best in the marketplace, that they have access to the best products within the industry is important because someone can come along and say, oh, we have living benefits too. But if it's, you know, number 100 versus number one, it's a big difference in terms of how the payout is, right? Like Mm -hmm. you mentioned, this company has been around for 175 years. They are the oldest mutually owned company which means they serve policyholders and not stockholders. That's another important point. Uh, Keeping promises for the last 175 years. That's one of the reasons that I love working with them is because of that. Yeah, because I know that they've got the customers back. A plus rated is another important one. Um, You want a company that's financially sound. um, 
and you want to look at their financials. Okay. Like you were saying, we all shy away from these financials, but it's important to look into the company's financials, at least for the last four years, if not for even longer, just to see what their track record is and how much are they paying out? Right. How much are they paying out? This company's paid out over 12 billion in the last three years since COVID uh, for living and death. In the last three years. Yes. In the last three years alone because of COVID. And so, they are also one of the rare companies that is not excluding COVID. There are some companies who are out there. Oh, guys, guess what? It's a pandemic. We are not paying you because it's a pandemic. This is one company, first company, in fact, when COVID was announced to say that we are paying for COVID, we are not excluding COVID. So that's a big deal, too. So those are some of the things to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, those are really big. And mm-hmm. I think the most important thing to me is that you're a nurse. You yeah. know, you, you've been in the trenches, you have um, done the work that we have done, putting everything out for patients and then coming home and, and being too exhausted to deal with anything, you exactly. know, just hoping that everything is going to work out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and what I noticed was that I needed a lot of handholding. Yeah. When it comes to understanding the basics first to get educated and to have someone that you can trust, right? Who knows your pain, who knows what you need in terms of having that bigger vision of where to get you and your family, uh, say 20, 30 years down the line in terms of a retirement, college funding, maybe it's even funding a business that you want to get into, you know, like kind of what I did. Uh, so to have that wider vision for what's possible. Or a nonprofit. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, um, um, you talked about learning about better options. So you're sharing with us, what are some of those options that are in the industry, but are, are they hidden? Are they, I, you know, I've not <laughs> heard of these things you're talking about. And I never, I can't remember ever hearing about guaranteeing contracts and, uh, you know, not losing market value. It just seemed like. Right. So the as the industry, to be yeah. there or not. Mm -hmm. As the industry has evolved over time, you know, kind of like technology, right? Every so often we need to upgrade our computer. We need to get a better phone. Uh, Same thing with your financials. Same thing with our financial setup. What is the uh, best thing for me right now? And is it a good time to move these things? So talking to somebody who is uh, in the know allows us to know when those proper moves can happen. And what are some of the better products or the best products that are out there if they have access to it? So I'm specifically talking about life insurance with living benefits. Yeah, if you can have access to the best best company, the number one product, obviously. Who doesn't want them, you know, (laughs) an iPhone, the newest iPhone that's out there. So what we get to do is trade out the flip phones for the iPhones. um, And then obviously with the retirement plans, right? If there's a way to completely eliminate market loss, And if there are ways to reposition your money into non-taxable buckets, that would be the ideal situation. Okay. So the the nurses that are coming to Power Up Nursing, Mm -hmm. they're going to come and hear you, right? You're going to be speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm guessing you're going to be available to talk to people also um, when you're not speaking. Mm -hmm. So people really have an advantage if they come to Power Up Nursing. Um, they are going to have a huge advantage in being able to talk with you personally and walk away feeling like I'm going to be the smartest person in the world to my husband, (laughs) to my spouse, to my kids, to my parents, to whoever it is that, you know, um, are looking at this. So what, uh, what, what do you get asked a lot from nurses and what do you expect to present at this meeting? So mainly it's just my personal journey and what I got out of this journey as a nurse, you know, within the financial services industry, uh, working with the number one broker right now, which I'm very grateful for. Um, And if Gracie can do it in terms of my own personal finances, uh, coming from where I came from, right? uh, Not that long ago. I know, only three years ago. uh, That should give a lot of people hope. Yeah, so I hope that I can bring my heart to this event and be able to share from that space um, of just uh, having gone through this personal journey myself and be able to relate in that way. You talked a little bit about what amount of money is going to be needed by, say, boomers uh, Mm -hmm. for retirement. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking, you know, if I had X amount of money, 
me by the time of retirement, that should be enough, right? Mm -hmm. And already I'm realizing, ooh, that's not even going to be close. And I've been working at it for the that's last right. 30 plus years. That's right. That's right. So, you know, typically we're told, you know, a million dollars, yeah, saved up in the 401k. But if you think about it, a million dollars is not going to be enough when you're talking about a 100% taxable bucket, yeah, and then also market loss. So those two things, market loss, 100% taxation with inflation, the way that it's going, if we're needing, say, in the next 20, 30 years, you know, uh, 50,000 or 100,000, however much it's required to basically keep our lifestyle going, that's maybe going to last us 10 or 20 years. My grandma lived to she was 105. So genetically, <gasps> you know, Gracie has another 50 years to go. If I were to retire in the next 10 years, I would have to basically take care of myself for 40 years. So how is that my, money my going to My mother is 95 and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she lived to 105. <laughs> right, 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 right. So um, those are the issues that we're dealing with. And what we're seeing is when people can start early, you know, like my kids in their 20s and put away money then, you know, and be able to have these policies with the living benefits in case anything happens. That is our safety net. It doesn't have to touch any of our assets, our properties, different things that we've worked so hard, you know, through time to basically build up. Um, and then also be able to build out a tax advantage or tax free retirement is massive. Because most retirement vehicles out there, whether it's a IRA, pension, you know, uh, 401k, 403bs, you name it, they are all 100% taxable. Yeah. Yeah. So. so what would you like to say to encourage our nurses to not only come, but bring their friends, their colleagues, their whoever else? <laughs> you know, we want a lot of people to really be able to experience this at this yes. um you know, power up nursing, we, we, we are reminding nurses, you have more power than you even know you have. So what, what would you say to encourage them to come? I would say, uh, you know, first of all, be open to creating that open door for yourself. Yeah. For a change, for a positive shift to come to something like this, where you can up level your mindset, your, you know, understanding your heart set, your skill set in terms of these types of topics. I think the wealth building piece, the financial piece is key when it comes to healthcare workers. And obviously, if we know a good thing, we want to share it, right, with as many people as we can um, and uh, be able to create an impact in their lives as well. So uh, yeah, share it with your network, share it with friends that you know, and then they get to share it too. Great. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. So we will be um, looking forward to being able to meet in person uh, in Orlando, Florida, June 22nd to June 24th. And um, I know that Tanya is probably going to put on here something about powerupnursing.com and how they can get on there and find out how to be able to register. It's going to be a top level hotel that we're going to be in. We are just it's like such an opportunity to really be able to talk with nurses in a positive way instead of this, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next to us? Um, really believing that we can set it up so that we can stand nose to nose with those people that now we feel like are oppressing us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. To feel empowered versus not. Yeah. To have the yeah. tools. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I have to tell you, uh, I don't know if you prefer Gracie or Grace, but I, <laughs> I am so numbered, so happy to count you as one of my dearest new friends. Uh, and I definitely will want to be able to connect with you and um, learn as much as I can from you. Likewise, Leanne. I yeah. look forward to continuing this uh, building of our relationship and uh, yeah, continue to sure. help other nurses as well to empower so them. This, this session has been wealth building for nurses and I cannot wait to see 350 nurses coming to our session and just leaving feeling like oh, the weight of the world has been lifted. So thank you. Appreciate your, your time with us now today. And we will be putting this out for everybody to see very soon. Thank you. Aloha.